So in, in game theory, it is one of the very interesting. It exists in, in our real life everywhere now and then. It consists in banking programming when we have a software developers and they are controlling the business. Uh, it consists in many uh, few steel industry in cement industry where we have a few players existing in the market where they are starting to have a strategy to penetrate the market. What will be my strategy? How can I enter? How can I do this? Usually when we look for the game theory, we have a plan to explain this. It have uh, the, the, the prisoner dilemma crisis that we explained it before and how the, each one is going to say or confess if he is did the crime or not. And as you see in this matrix that we start to explain it before by using the prisoner dilemma model, if we have two players, Henry and Dave, for let's say, for example, and we isolate both of them because they found in a certain place for committing a crime. And when they start to investigate with them, they found both of them said that we didn't do it, we didn't do it, not guilty, not guilty. So both of them will have two years in jail. But if there is a one strategy completely different than the other strategy, let's say that they've said that he is not he is not doing the crime because then he is not guilty and the other one he will have the guilty so he, as you see here this one here he said nothing he remains silent he doesn't say anything so he will be five years whether the other one will be out of free and he will be the winner and this one will be the loser if you go for the other one and you see that uh, the matrices here it is completely opposite where we have here dave he is guilty and when they say that I'm not doing anything, I didn't do anything, and the other one remains silent. So the one that is Henry wearing red, he will be in a prisoner. And as you see here, he will be for longer time paying the penalty for doing the crime. But if both of them, let's say, for example, commit the crime and they are guilty, both of them are guilty. So here, both of them will have a three years. This three years when they are not cooperating together, but this two years when they are cooperating together, the matrix has been reversed and then the previous one. So today we are going to look for the strategies and the gaming that they are doing. What the gaming, what the strategy, what each one of the rivalry will do, which one will say yes and which will one will say no. no. Consequently, we are trying to use, as we did in the Fernand and Stagberg model, the payoff. What are the main payoff? The payoff as you return back, this is the pay of five years, one year, and this is the real life of cases and how we can be inspired by getting the gaming, the reaction that they're doing. The strategy here for rule uh, or plan or action of playing a game. So we need to look, put, we need to put optimal strategy. What is the best strategy? What is the strategy that the maximize the player profit, let's say, maximize the player's revenue, let's say. So I think if I believe that my, that my competitors are rational under this assumption, because in reality, we have a lot of uh, producers in the market, they are not rational. They make, let's say, for example, price war. So sometimes this is called irrational behavior. How should I take this behavior? How can I react with this? What will be my decision? And this is what we are trying to explain in this lecture. So basically it is important. I have a cooperative, cooperative games or non-cooperative games. When we look for the cooperative games, so they are working in circles, they are working in groups, as you see here. So it is cattle per reward. For, so how can we do this? It is a teamwork. So when we have a cooperative game, game in which participants can negotiate, can bid together, can set the auctions together. So this is what we call it cooperative game. So they work in circle, they work with each other. While the non-cooperative game, game in which negotiation and enforcement of bidding are impossible. No one can agree. They are opponent to each other. They are against each other. So it is essential to understand your opponent. Which one is my opponent? He is going to play with me or we are going to fight against each other. So, so when we go for the non-cooperative versus the cooperative game, we need to look for how to buy a dollar bill. If I'm asking you to go to auction and a dollar bill, I'm asking you to bid for this dollar. It is unusually because it's $1. It can be higher, it can be lower. Maybe it is an old one. So how much I'm going to pay this game? How many numbers of times? So how many times of number of time I'm going to play? I will stay how many number of times playing this game to bid, to ask for a dollar bill, to ask for this dollar. So it depends on the numbering, how many numbers. I'm going to do it repetitively or I'm doing, going to do it just one time. So the gaming here, it is important. 
In gaming as well, we need to look for our dominant search. Who are the winner usually? Who who is the, the, the winner card? What is the winner card? Who is what's he, whatsoever happen? He will practicing the best businesses. So I bring this matrix for two firms from A and B. They are competing products and they are having two strategies, either to advertise or do not advertise. So So the matrix of the dominant strategy, the matrix of the dominant strategy, it is depending on. So if you see here this matrix and we have firm A and firm B and each one have either to advertise or do not advertise. So if you have a look for a minute or for a second, let's say, uh, what is the dominant strategy? Who, who will have the dominant strategy? So if you see here, if I'm using my pen here and you see that this is the advertise for this firm A and this is the, if you don't advertise and if firm A advertise and the other do not advertise and firm A do not advertise and the other one do not advertise. Let's start by saying if both of them if both of them advertise, we will find that firm A will be having high payoff. If we both of them as well do not advertise, what happened? We will find as well firm A have the highest play or the highest return. So as you see here, if both of them advertise or both of them do not advertise, we see that firm A is the winner but if let's say for example if they are reversed or they are not the same for example so someone advertise and the other one do not advertise if the other one do not advertise then we find here here firm b will have the bound strategy here they will have the highest return if we go for the firm A have an advertise and the other do not advertise, we will find here that firm A will have the benefit. So who have the dominant strategy, who are the usually the winner in many cases, only one case he will not win, only when he do not advert, when he do not advertise. So in many cases, firm A is the dominant strategy in this play as he is keeping having the highest return in this matrices. So if we look for this dominant strategy, do we have an equilibrium in dominant strategy? We have an, uh, unfortunately, not every game has a dominant strategy. Not usually have it in every, in every time. Not usually. We play a lot of Monopoly. We play a lot of the chess. Not usually. But it is very important that when we are doing these practices from human behavior, if I'm not studying the previous behavior and I keep it in my records, I cannot make an accurate, I cannot make an accurate estimation because as you know, using machine learning, I keep recording the previous motions as we are doing XO, let's say for example. But it is not usually that we have a dominant strategy. But when we keep trying, I know the best strategy that I can apply by keeping playing the same strategies or from the different move from my opponent. So I have here an advertise and advertise. So A is firm A is winner. If firm A is not doing well, then firm B will having it better because they are advertised as we said in the previous. But here, if both of them do not advertise, here firm A have a dominant strategy. Here as well, firm A have a dominant strategy. If both of them, if firm A advertise and the other do not advertise, so here we find the big player, the big dominant strategy as well here in modified advertising game, keeping learning from the previous strategy, what can maximize my profit. So if we go for Nash, what is the difference? I usually ask you for the difference between the dominant strategy and Nash. I'm doing the best I can. Know what you do, taking in consideration what you do. I know that you are playing in this I, to me. So to play this, it is important to look for, I'm, I'm taking this in my consideration when we look for Nash equilibrium. But concerning dominant strategy, I'm doing the best I can know 
I can know what you do. I can know what you do here. You can no matter what I do. ما تفرش معي. You doesn't. I doesn't care. Like in concerning Nash, you are doing. You can given what I am. Taking in consideration my plane. I put for you a production choice problem between two firms. They are producing crispy and sweets. And this is a types of cereal for a certain brand of a product. So have a look here. If both of them produce the same product. So as you see here, each firm A and firm one and two produce crispy. So they are losing. If both of them produce a sweet crispy, a sweet cereal, then both of them are giving losses. But if they are differentiated here, this is brilliant because when they are differentiated of production of a choice, so each one will have a Nash equilibrium, will have a better choice, will have a positive return, have a positive return in their businesses. So this is the product choice problem, how much of units I'm doing, how number of production I'm trying to produce. So this is the important points that we are explaining. So we have a very interesting, interesting as well strategy since we are trying to investigate for the different type of strategy. So we have something called maxi men, maxi men strategy, strategy that maximize the minimum gain, maximize the minimum gain that can be earned. So here, I'm trying to maximize the minimum gain. Uh, somehow I can achieve it. That can be earned. It is simply returned to Nash concept. It depends on the individual rationality, individual rationality that they are going to play with, with each other. Each player choice of a strategy depends on not only on his own rationality, but also on the rationality of the opponents. So if both of them do not invest, so both of them will not having nothing. If both of them are investing, so we will have someone is invest and the other one will invest. So here, as you see, this is will both of them enter the market, both of them go for investment. So you will have the maxi min, it is 20 here when both of them invest and here is 10. So this is what we call it maximum. What do you mean by maximum strategy? Strategy that maximize, maximize the minimum gain. From يعني, the best things from the minimum gain. يعني, لو الجين, زبتاعتي, let's say, for example, the minimum gain is 10 and 10. Is the, this is the minimum. I will get this is 10. I will achieve the 10. And this is clearly explained in when both of them invest. This is what we call it maxi, maximize the minimum gain that I can earn. So maximum strategy, which means maximizing the expected payoff, will do, but well, let's say for, ha for having firm one is I'm unsure about what firm two will do, but can assign probability. So you remember that these are different probability, both of them do invest, so this is probability one, probability two, probability three, probability four. And in this course, I'm talking about only four probability. In advanced courses, we can have three for each firm decision, then three times three. So we have, let's say, for example, uh, six probability when we have two player with three decisions. But I'm focusing only, only on what we say uh, the, the, the two, of, uh, two probability or two choices here. It could instead use a strategy that maximize its expected payoff. So as you remember the prisoner dilemma for the confess, so what will be the maximum strategy if I'm applying this? So Nash equilibrium here is looking for the equilibrium situation for the maximized benefit from the minimum gain. So the maximum benefit from the minimum, both of them remain silent. And when they both of them remain silent, so each one will have two and two years in jail. This is what we call it the maximum. Sometimes we have in business life, we have a mixed strategy. Sometimes we have maximized strategy, minimizing strategy. Sometimes I have a repeated games. So I need to know the opponents and the behavior of my opponent. He is going to make a line with me or we are going to compete against each other. So pure strategy in which a player make a specific choice or take a specific action. Let's say when we are playing uh, head or tail, head or tail. So if both are heads, 
then one for this one and here is one negative and if it is reversed tail and tail so if they are identical in their choices here so one will get a point and the other one will. in each game we choose we need to look for the head and tail head and tail in order to see who will win if i'm saying head so i will win so this is the head for me and the tails will be for the other player so the mix of the strategy means in which a player make a random choice randomly sometimes i'm happy here today so i did advertisement this year i'm not so i'm not advertising this is referring or attract my attention to one of the brand of the uh, textile wear they are doing only they are doing only advertisement on ramadan but in other seasons they are not but sometimes maybe they got out of their trend and they do advertisement in other times instead of ramadan so it's come here to play so when we're going to play with jim and joan and they are spending the night together but have a different test taste in entertainment so this is our films and they are looking for films if they are agreed to see the same films so this is will have two benefits for the joan but when he watch opera he is not that much happy so in this matrix you see that joan is quite happy when he show his preferences and he got two and on the other side you see jim is very happy in preferences when he have watching the opera let's say so it is the most wrestling the joan prefer it while the other one in opera going for the opera the one we prefer for jim so here it comes to the how many numbers of going of times i'm going to play this game if you go for disney and you love one of the games how many numbers of times are going to make a repeated games you usually are doing it many times or it just tit for tat and this is what we're going to compare between how does a reputation change do we do the same changes or the same choices or not so if both firms setting a price of low price so this is what output matches if both firm have and repeated games and i see them and they agree together and set high prices so both of them are a winner so here if there is a repeated game so the best one to have a high prices when we are doing colluding or collusions together in order to have a high return however if we have an opposite you will see the one who will set the low prices in front of the high prices he will win i have here high prices and the our the other one put low prices so he will win so this is depending on the repeating action how many numbers of repeating action so if you enter the market and you have in a business five players and you usually see these five players it is important to make an agreement between them if there is a trust if there is a rationality behavior but what happened for tit for tat what a tit for tat let's go for a tit for tat strategy repeated games so if i have a tit for tat in repeated games and i know the players and they are responding in a kind in kind to an opponent previous play so i'm not quite happy either if i am happy i will be cooperate if i'm unhappy then there will be attack when attacks happen or i will forgiving the person who do this so i remember in real life practices uh, we have people who are working in the frozen meat in a certain country let's say country x and in this country they have these five players who are exporting frozen meats from one country and they know that another one is going to enter the market so they are quite happy that there are five and they don't know who is this sixth person he is wanting to enter the market with the frozen meat production play so he will enter he will take part of the pie he will take part of the profit so they agree to gather cooperate together in order to get rid of this sixth person so they reserve all the frozen meats despite they were empty and no one want anything from the port when the ships come and when the guy come to the port and land down his frozen meat he didn't find fridge to reserve it so what happened all his frozen meat has been destroyed why because he didn't find a place to put his frozen meat why because the other five cooperate against him in order to get rid of this person and unfortunately this person by the end he got heart attack because he lost his fortune and this has happened in reality and this is what we call it non cooperative when we want to get rid of a person who is uh, is existing in the market 
Another types of games, infinite repeated games, infinite which is repeated, you use one to gain, so it is better to cooperate and forgive the other player. Let's say for the XO, we usually play this one, but sometimes people are mastering the winner, and sometimes people are usually having the best practice, and usually this is what we call it, finite nine of repetition. So here I know all the steps, I know all the move, and this is what we use it in machine learning. I know all the steps, I know all the moves, so I can predict what will be the next step and what will be the move I have it in the future. So if I want to get rid of the opponents that I have it and I uh, do not expect to live forever, then the unrevealing arguments say that to make a tit for tat strategy of a little value. So if I'm not containing or maintaining for a long life, so why to do this? In practice, however, tit, of tat, tit for tat can sometimes work and cooperation can reveal there are two primary reasons. Most managers in clear life do not know how long they will be competing. If you remember Nokia, if you remember, let's say, for example, Montgomery case retailer, also this also serves to make a cooperative behavior. So it is better to cooperate since I don't know how long I'm competing. But let's say if you go for Netflix, they the Netflix proposed to cooperate with Blockbuster, but they didn't. And my competitor might have some doubt to the extent of my rationality. So it is depend on the rationality of the player, how much they are going to, do, to work. I bring for you here a repeated games for oligopolist cooperation in the water meter industry. What they do in this meter industry, which is very too nice experience, almost the water meters solid, the gauge that we use it in the United States have been produced by four, only four players. So since they are four, they are play, big players, they are controlling the American company. Rockwell International has had about 35% of the share and the other three firms have together had about 50 to 55% of the share. So usually most buyers of water meters are in the municipal water utilities. So who installed the meters in order to measure the water consumption and bill by consumer accordingly. So the utility are concerned mainly that the meters be accurate and reliable and the price not a primary use. And demand is very inelastic because all the people need it and it is very important because any entrant will find it difficult to lure the customer for existing competitors. So they depend on the economies of scale, producing huge numbers of units. And this is create a second barriers because they produce huge number they have a power in the market. So the third phase, a prisoner dilemma, and can cooperation prevail? It is possible to prevail. There is rarely an attempt to undercut the prices, and it is very hard to cut the prices, decrease the prices. So the firms start to agree together in order to make cooperation because the price is important. Maybe they can agree together and they set the price together and put it at a higher level of prices. So oh. Like there is a regulation, so it is important to make a cost Okay, so this is when they agree together, they can set the prices and they are having hard work. Let's go for one of my favorite cases, one of the, my lovely cases that I have it when they have repeated games, airline. Before COVID-19, for sure, airlines were trying to get benefit and the prices was very high. But recently, if you search for a trip to Europe, you will find the prices very attractive recently. So here I'm going to share with you the collusion that happened in airline industry. In March 1983, American Airlines proposed that all airlines adopt a uniform fare schedule. First schedule of mileage, which means up certain prices per mileage. The rate per mile would depend on the length. So I will pay, let's say, for example, the lowest trip, 15 cent per mile, per mile for the trip over 2,500 miles. And the highest rate was 53% per mile for the trips under 250 miles. So why did American propose this plan? Why did they do this? They aim to reduce the price competition and achieve collusion pricing. So they want to agree together and set the price. Fixing the price, it is illegal because this is called price rigidity on their intervention. But so they want to make this fair price. And instead, the companies would implicitly fix the price by agreeing, by saying this, but they explicitly meaning this. Then the plan failed, and there is a victim of this prisoner dilemma. There is the people try to agree together, 
to set the prices, but they failed because Pan American Inline, Pan American Inline was dissatisfied because it have a small share in US market, very, very, very small. How she can take revenge is to start to drop the prices, drop it dramatically. And here, a lot of United American and TWA are afraid of losing their shares. So quickly they drop the fair prices and PAM airline to match their PAM lines we call the two team. The plan was soon dead and all their strategy has been stopped. So it doesn't matter that you have a small chair in the market, but it depends on how you can survive and attract your customer. So this is what our last things that we did it, the pan and lines, the collusion, we did previously the gauge of water, and the next time we're going to do play with the matrices of the game theory. Thank you so much.